My name is Corley May, and this is the Book of the Week. I missed you guys last week. I was off at camp with a whole bunch of sixth graders, but now I'm back and really excited to talk with you about this week's book. This week's book is Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer. Wires and Nerve is a new graphic novel, but it fits into the world of Marissa Meyer's wildly popular YA novel series, The Lunar Chronicles. So these are books with titles like Cinder and Cress and Scarlet. Um, and those characters all play into the narrative of Wires and Nerve, but the focus in this graphic novel is really on an android named Aiko and her own adventures and feelings and missions. I really enjoyed this book. One of the blurbs on the cover referred to it as a fractured fairy tale, and I think that is the perfect description of what it is. When I first started reading this book, it was immediately clear that many of the main characters have parallels to the classic storybook characters we all grew up with. So there's definitely a Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf, Cinderella and a Prince Charming, Snow White and who I'm pretty sure is the Huntsman, um, and then there are some who I couldn't identify their direct parallels straight away. I probably spent a little too much time trying to figure out who they were before I really got into the plot, um, and at the end of the day I don't think it really matters, but it's fun to see those familiar storylines kind of popping up in a new and interesting way. Wires and Nerve starts with the explanation that Aiko is one member of this kind of band of rogues who have overthrown an evil queen and have put the rightful ruler in her place and are now trying to suss out the aftermath, including um, political relationships and a lot of social prejudices. So right away off the bat you know that this society is going to be an interesting and kind of rocky one to be reading about. Aiko is our heroine. She's an android and she's awesome. We get to learn a lot about her backstory starting as an artificial intelligence inside of a um, like mass-produced robot body and how she kind of evolved into something more than just a computer program. She's now in a human uh, synthetic body so she looks like all of her friends um, she's obviously much stronger harder to injure uh, nearly impossible to kill um, but she deals with some very human things and a lot of her time is spent kind of grappling with these emotions that she has and also trying to make her case to some people who doubt that she is really feeling these things um, to her, these are very real feelings, and she is just as human as her technically human peers. Um, and so it's really hurtful when they don't include her among them as one of their people. This book actually was an interesting confrontation of a lot of these ideas of stereotype and prejudice and even personhood as a general theory. Um, it's implied that the world of the Lunar Chronicles is far in the future and kind of post-racial. Um, but there are still people who judge or reject others based on their differentness. Um, there is definitely still a theme of otherhood. Um, and I think that Marissa Meyer is going in an interesting direction in her means of confronting these ideas, but in a slightly removed way from the way that these things are playing out in our current society. And it seems to me like sometimes when we can remove things from us a little bit, it's kind of easier to confront and reflect on our own society's tendencies once we can see them playing out in a different society or a fictional world and we can see for ourselves how unfair and how unfounded these prejudices really are. Echo's initial mission is hunting down these wolf hybrid soldiers who were created by the former evil queen to do her bidding and generally be terrible and terrifying. Echo is not hunting them down and killing them, she's just kind of um, taking them out of the general populace and then taking them back to uh, Luna where she lives so that they can kind of be dealt with and rehabilitated and that kind of thing. These wolf hybrid soldiers are distrustful of royalty because of the evil queen who made them and they are not willingly going back with Aiko. So there are some big fight scenes. Um, Aiko is tough and capable and really fun to watch and she is capturing these bad guys efficiently, swiftly, and with a lot of really cool old school comic book onomatopoeia, which I especially loved reading. Most of the first, I would say, 
two thirds to three quarters of the book is really world building and giving us historical context, relationship building, getting to know our characters. The action really picks up in the last quarter of the book. Um, but when it picks up, it is very exciting and very compelling and my interest is definitely piqued for a sequel. In the meantime, I'm probably going to start reading those Lunar Chronicles novels. I wasn't really interested in them before, but now that I've seen kind of the action and the complexity of the world that they're in, I'm interested in reading more about it. There were a couple little ticks that kind of turned me off from this book. One of them is that every character is drawn ridiculously attractive, which is such a terrible thing. Um, but it's you know not everybody in the real world is ridiculously attractive and it may be a feature of this future world that I'm just not um, plugged into yet maybe they've all been genetically you know whittled into these beautiful attractive people and cyborgs and androids um, but that was something that was kind of interesting to me was that even the bad guys even the uh, like supposedly grotesque and terrible wolf hybrid people are still like ruggedly handsome in their own way. The other thing is that pretty much everybody is paired off or at least potentially paired off by the end of the book. So all of our heroes have their romantic counterparts. Um, we have the one relationship that's like really contentious and fraught right now, but we're definitely seeing the foreshadowing that they're going to end up together as well. Um, and again, Happy endings are not a bad thing. Romance is not a bad thing, but it's always kind of refreshing to find a book that doesn't seem to qualify a romantic partner as something that is essential for your own personal story. But those two small things aside, this was a really compelling graphic novel. It's definitely appropriate for any middle grades readers. Um, people who have read the Lunar Chronicles and are looking for more will certainly enjoy this, but it's also accessible to people who have no idea what the Lunar Chronicles are. Uh, which is nice because it's a really great standalone story as well. So that's it for this week's book of the week. I'll be back next week with another book and until then, bye!